The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the apostles, Who among you would say to your servant, who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here immediately and take your place at table? Would he not rather say to him, Prepare something for me to eat? Put on your apron and wait on me while I eat and drink. You may eat and drink when I am finished. Is he grateful to that servant because he did what was commanded? So should it be with you when you have done all that you have been commanded. Say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what we were obliged to do. The Gospel of the Lord. During this time of the year, the liturgical year is coming to an end. And this month of November is reminding us of what it means to come to the end, if you know what I mean. What are you going to do at the end of your life? Who have you become at the end of your life? And where do you want to go for the end of your life? The Book of Wisdom pulls no punches that we hear today. God formed man to be imperishable. The image of his own nature, he made them. But by the envy of the devil, death entered into the world. And they who are his possession experience it. Imagine experiencing the end of the world at the command of the devil. And these scriptures are not made to so much frighten us, but to wake us up, if you will, to sort of wake us to rise from the dead, maybe. And so there comes a certain assurance here. The author of wisdom says, the souls of the just, who are they? Hopefully us. The souls of the just are in the hand of God. No torment shall touch them. But why are they in the hand of God? They're in the hand of God because he takes care of his servants. He takes care of us. And at the same time, the author of wisdom is reminding us, remember what your place is, that you have been a servant. And everything you have came from God. Your parents gave you birth, but they have no idea about what was going on to make that happen. Well, in some case, in, in a certain way, yes, but this was all under God's plan. And so, we are the servants. And when it comes time for the finish of our life of service, we die. And we stand before God. And, I, and as I was reading this, I was thinking, we're going to have two one of two reactions. First of all, we're going to have the reaction of this. I don't deserve this. I don't deserve this. The, the I don't deserve it of humility. 
I didn't do anything to make this happen. This is all out of God's love. I don't deserve this. On the other hand, there is an uh, other I, I don't deserve this response. I don't deserve this with contempt. I didn't deserve anything that happened in my life, and I'm angry at God. Where do you want to be? The book of wisdom goes on. For if before men they be punished, yet there is hope for immortality. In other words, the author of wisdom is saying, we're going to have hardships in life. That's because of sin. And, we're, and we should be fighting for our lives against sin. Yet their hope is, for Im, is full of immortality. I'm trusting God. I'm his servant. I make mistakes, but I want to be with him. This is the man who says, or the woman, um, I don't deserve this because I'm humble. I can't even believe that you're offering this to me. And then he's going to turn on the projector and show you everything about your life. And you're going to say, I can't even believe how all those bad things that frightened me or that even at times made me angry, all those fit into the puzzle and make the effort worthy and noble. The one who says, I don't deserve this out of contempt, grumbles and rages. Why did you put me through this? This is the one who is not just. This is the one who is angry at God and refuses to respond to his love. The one who is the servant, the obedient servant, will say, I don't deserve this, but I trust in your mercy. The one who was not a good servant will say, I don't deserve this, and it's all your fault. And actually, that's pretty much the line of the devil. I didn't deserve to be kicked out of heaven. It's all your fault, Mr. God. Contempt. And so with all that rage, at the time of judgment, this servant who is filled with contempt for the way he feels shortchanged, he doesn't want to be. He does not want to be in heaven. He's interested in a different venue, and he's fixated. And God says, have it your way. And for the good servant who thinks he's been lesser and not good enough, Jesus says, I will raise you up. Which of these servants would you like to be? Which of these servants is it worth trying for or striving for? When you have done all you have been commanded, say we are unprofitable servants. Think about it for a minute. Students of Holy Family Academy, when you come to the age where you start having children, okay, you're going to find out how difficult it is to raise a child. And you're going to find out that sometimes children are complicated and they're hard to manage and they think they know what they're doing all the time, but somehow they have this shroud that makes them blind to reality. Someday you'll get to see the other, that side. And this is where it becomes necessary for us to be faithful to God so that even though we make mistakes that the heart of us 
and the soul of us desires to be a servant who's willing to say, I'm just a humble servant. I just did what I was told. Those who trust in him shall understand the truth and the faithful shall abide with him in love because grace and mercy are with his holy ones and his care is with the elect. Is this your heart's desire? Regina Jenny, Alleluia, ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia.